we'll move on to the Beavers. Oregon State. And they had a pretty awesome year last year, if I do say so myself. Uh, Jonathan Smith has really kind of turned that program around, and he has made them very entertaining. Uh, Jonathan Smith, they are... They went 7-6 and six last year. That was 7-6 and six against the spread as well. But their postgame win expectancy said that they should have been 8.13 and 3.87. So closer to 8-4 and four than the 7-5 and five that they were in the regular season. Remember, they lost the bowl game, the, the L.A. Bowl, to Utah State. Uh, this The projected SP Plus here is 7-5. and five. I'm having a little bit of trouble with that. Their offensive PPA per drive last year was off the charts, number 6 in that regard. Their defensive PPA per drive was completely opposite, number 87. So not the worst in the country, but still not very good. Turnover margin, number 57. Penalties per game, number 99, etc. cetera. Uh, this team, I'm, I'm having trouble figuring out what they're going to do because I, I trust Jonathan Smith to have a really good offense. But they lost some big-time playmakers, um, even, even though they have a lot of returning production coming back. They're number 22 in the country, bringing back 75%. And on offense, they're bringing back 74%. On defense, 75%. So, you know, top 30 in basically every metric for returning production. And the roster strength gets me a little bit. They are losing uh, Beeson. They're losing Bradford, the two wide receivers. They're losing B.J. Baylor, who took a huge chunk of the carries last year. So that that could be a little bit of an issue. They lose uh, the center, Nathan Eldridge. Now, you got... Plenty of options at quarterback. Chance Nolan, etc. cetera. Um, I would imagine he'll be starting, but you never know. You never know. Uh, I don't know that it's going to be a massive problem. I just think that you could see a bit of a drop back because the rushing success rate was number two in the country and passing success number 31. I don't know that you can continue to run at the same clip without B.J. Baylor, but obviously we'll see. Uh, does the offense stay the same? Like their rushing rate was 60-40, rushing to pass. Like, they ran the ball 60% of the time last year uh, and still had a, a hugely successful offense. Uh, they lost uh, the top wide receiver, Bradford. There are playmakers there, though. FSU transfer, Harrison, Lindsey, et cetera. They got four offensive linemen back with 380-plus snaps. Like, there are ways that this can then that this whole thing can work. But, again, you lose some some real star power here. Uh, on defense, uh, Tibisar, the defense coordinator, was fired after the loss to Colorado last year. Trent Bray came in and proved them from giving up 405 yards per game in the first eight games to only giving up 346 in the last four. Uh, now, obviously, strength of schedule matters a little bit there, but uh, still, they got 75% returning production here on defense. They were number 87 in PPA per drive um, and number 85 in points per scoring opportunity. So people were able to finish drives on them, and they got to find a way to get stops, really. They got nine starters back on this, and I, I think they could be better in year two under Bray. I just, you know, I've got to see it from them. I've got to see it from Jonathan Smith. He's never put a focus on um, on defense. Uh, watch the linebacker Omar Spates. Watch the uh, the nickelback Jaden Grant. Those guys are going to be a lot of fun to watch uh, for sure. Um, let's talk about keys to the season. The offense was incredibly explosive or incredibly efficient last year, but not very explosive. They were number 115 in explosive play rate last year. Um, can they add that element to the offense? They were number 58 in 20 plus yard plays, number 65 in 30 plus yard plays. Like maybe that can give you a little more separation in some of these games if your defense does not exactly hold up. Defense, of course, like I said, returns nine starters. Can they improve from giving up? Uh, they were number one, excuse me, number 81 in points per play allowed. I'm going to be very curious to watch what Bray does with this defense if he tries to uh, maybe install something a little different than what he did at the middle of the year last year. They need to improve both the turnover margin, number 57, and penalties per game because that is how you have a po- uh, post-game win expectancy of 8.13, but you only win seven games, right? Like, it, you take care of the football, you don't beat yourself. You should have had eight wins last year. So, uh, record that I've got for him, six and six. You know, not bad. Not bad. I, I think uh, I've got a loss to Boise State and a win at Fresno. I mean, swap those around. I, I expect you to go one and one in those games. Like, you'll lose to one of them, I would imagine. Uh, but if Jonathan Smith has this thing rolling out of the gate, 
I mean, they could they could easily win both of those. And on top of that, a win over Montana State, but then you run into a gauntlet here, uh, USC at Utah, and then I've got a quote-unquote schedule loss at Stanford. I don't know that Stanford's going to be very good, but you have to play them on the road after playing USC and Utah. I think this is a body bruise game. Uh, then you've got Washington State after that, Colorado at Washington, Cal at Arizona State and Oregon. I got losses. I mean, I've got them at 6-6, six and six, right? Like, I just think that they are going to be right down the middle. They're going to win games that you don't expect them to. They're going to lose games that you don't expect them to, much like they did last season. So, 6-6 six and six is the record for me on Oregon State. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at Chris B. Giannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.